Bonjour, je m'appelle Émilie et j'ai écrit le poème Porte. Nous n'avons pas de porte dans la maison, alors j'ai construit des murs. Enfermé dans ma chambre, dans mes pensées, il faut frapper pour y entrer. Nous n'avons pas de porte dans la maison, or toute ma vie je disais c'est qui, c'est qui. Toute ma vie j'ai rétraci, 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 caché sous le silence. Nous n'avons pas de porte, mais fermement, je me comporte. Même sans les portes, je connais des barrières. Hi, I'm Runqing. Hi, I am Jorge. I wrote a Chinese poem, Yuan, and with my husband, Jorge, we have translated it into Spanish. So we are going to read the poem in Chinese and Spanish. Then I will talk about the story behind the poem. Yuan 夜阑月明，草绿风凄，杨思水寂，难续离情。Lejanía, noche azul, luna blanca, pasto verde, viento suave. ¿A dónde va la nostalgia? Es difícil narrar la ausencia. Um, so I came up with this poem one evening when I was walking back from campus to my apartment. Um, I saw the moon, the dark blue sky, and the shadow of the grasses. And a few days before that night, I just heard the news that my aunt was diagnosed with cancer. I was very close to her when I was a child. I spent many happy times in her house, and I felt bad since I could not go back to accompany her in her hardest moment. So I wrote this poem to express these mixed feelings. Because I have been staying far away from my family in China, I have missed many occasions to formally say goodbye to some beloved ones. Besides my aunt, I was also absent from funerals of my grandmother and the best friend of my grandfather, which I regarded him as my grandfather. Um, it's hard for me to place these emotions, so writing the poem consoled me a little bit. Um, although I was sad, but a tradition of Chinese Asian poem is that we do not express our sadness in an extreme way, but rather in a tactful, implicit, and ambiguous way. Uh, we want to leave some space for readers. So I'm very looking forward to reading the creative translations of this poem. And to all the translators, I want to say thank you. Thank you for translating my poem into different languages. You gave the poem a second life. Crochet. Fasten off without leaving a knot. Usually at Christmas, our gift from Nan was a check. This freed Uncle Ron and Aunt Donna to track down personalized presents for the younger kids without worrying about us. Two years ago, we were handed large gift bags instead. I opened mine to find a handmade afghan like the ones that had always been draped over Nan's furniture. It was a yellow, white, and cream chevron pattern, heavy but thin. It smelled of non, no doubt having soaked in the perfumed air of the farmhouse for years. Someone murmured that these were the afghans non had made for each of us, meant to be gifts at our college graduations or weddings. When I fought through the room to thank her, feeling like I might splinter from the unexpected honor of being given something so precious, I wasn't certain she recognized it. I used the blanket as little as possible to preserve the smell, but it faded by summer. Weave in the ends as you go. Before I learned to crochet, it never occurred to me that the yarn could come unraveled. Once it did, I googled every method I could find to prevent it. I feverishly pulled the tails of the yarn through the back loop of each stitch, thinking how crushed I would be if Julia put this blanket in the wash a month from now and the whole thing started coming undone. 
She would put the remains away in storage, unwilling to throw it away, but too polite to tell me it had fallen apart. I would notice the blanket's absence and assume she didn't care for it and feel embarrassed by the time and sweat I put into it. Perhaps the unspoken tension would strain our relationship until we drifted apart. Or maybe she would admit what happened and I would painstakingly repair it. Then we would both know we couldn't fully trust my handiwork again. Bury the tails. My younger brother's afghan is white and purple. It looks as nice as the yellow one, but I wonder whether it was made with him in mind. If Nan had gotten to his name on her to-do list while she was still able to hold a crochet hook, or if Ron and Donna had grabbed an unclaimed blanket from her stash in order to round out the Christmas presents. My brother showed my mom a long string of purple yarn trailing from a square in the center. My mother realized the end had never been woven in. She quickly folded the blanket back into the bag and promised him she'd fix it for him when we got home. At dinner, we had Nan's famous buns, though Nan's baking had become dense and lumpy and a source of stress. Aunt Catherine had taken over making them about four Christmases earlier. Wine night. I never knew how to help her, but she came over anyway. Every time she left, I felt vaguely uncomfortable, as if I had just watched someone ditch a car crash. But maybe that was the alcohol. She collapsed on my carpet, cross-legged with her shoes still on, and I put some wine into my squat kitchen glasses and handed one to her, and she clutched her forehead with her other hand. I perched on the edge of the couch, assessing, waiting for the next thing I could do. The problem is, she said, that she cooks so well, anything I do can never compare. She's always complaining when she has to cook, but when I do it, she just talks about how it could have been better. And look, with my ex, he couldn't cook anything, so I know a little of what it's like. And do you know, she interrupted herself, holding up a finger as if I'd spoken, there is nothing you can do with canned green beans aside from casserole. Nothing. For that matter, there's probably not much you can do with them fresh either. You can fry them or you can microwave them, but they're still just green beans. You can't disguise green beans in something else. You can't sneak them in anything good. Green beans have to be the main event. I made a casserole and I crammed that pan with beans and I used up all of the cream of mushroom that I thought would stretch to two casseroles. And now I have a huge pan of leftover casserole and a Tupperware full of beans that didn't fit in the pan. And I have another can, another 6.3 pounds of them. She took a swig of the wine, grimacing a little. It was cheap and said, you know what else? You know what just drives me over the fucking edge? You know what makes me think I'm living in a fucking comic strip? There's a normal size can left in my cupboard from months ago. Like I bought a few on a shopping trip and never got to that one. And now whenever this green bean nightmare is over, I'm still going to have to get rid of one more bowl of them. I'm not about to waste food. She's always going on about sticking to our budget anyway. She should appreciate that. I've learned my lesson about ordering groceries online anyway. The options are just so limited after she totaled the car. I guess I could give her some more grief about that, couldn't I? I could bring it up more often. She would, if it had been me. Maybe she can figure out how we get groceries now. Maybe she can walk to the tiny overpriced grocery store and carry the bags the eight blocks, or she could figure out how to get the terrible public transportation system to drop her off half a mile from the Aldi. Or she could be the one to go on the website and put two cans in the cart and watch from the window as the Instacart guy unloads two oil drums of green beans from the trunk of his Impala. The thing is, she said after draining the glass, I really like cooking. And I liked driving too. And I like keeping a house nice, and I like feeling like my life is a little ship and I'm the captain. I like the boring parts of it when I know what I'm doing. I like filing my taxes, and I like budgeting, and I like making appointments on the phone. I like standing on the deck and looking out to sea and feeling the quiet pride of knowing I can navigate these waters. Like, it isn't even a big deal. I do this every day. She's a bit of a jerk, but she's not the devil, you know? She said, shifting so her legs were folded under her. She's just got her own ship, and she's a good captain. Maybe it's just too much of a bummer for me to be co-captain. She held out a hand for me to help her up, which I did, and I found that she was a lot more unsteady than I thought. I wondered how much she drank before making her way here. Maybe you should take a couple days, I said. You could go visit your mom, get some space. She shook her head immediately. That's what I come here for, she said. I need to pee. 
She headed to my mildewed bathroom, and I got the broom to sweep up the gravel she'd tracked in. Un hiver long, dans les rues longues et tristes d'une ville abandonnée, la neige danse en tombant. Un seul oiseau se met à chanter parmi le gris, son chant chaud et né de gel fondante, de solitude et de fumée.